before starting this lesson, I highly recommend watching a video about value versus reference in JavaScript if you are not proficient in this topic. In front-end development, we often need to expand or modify certain objects. For instance, if we have an object called animal with its own properties, we might want to create objects like dog and cat that share a similar structure but have slight differences. Prototype inheritance is a language feature that can help with this, but it can be challenging for beginners because it's complex and you need to remember and understand some tricky concepts and tips. This topic is essential for your upcoming interview session. In this video, we'll try to simplify the understanding of prototypes by explaining all its aspects, starting from the basics and gradually moving to more advanced ones. By the end of the video, you'll solve various tasks to demonstrate your full understanding of prototypes. First, let's list all the features we'll cover today, all of which are somehow related to prototypes. In JavaScript, objects have a hidden property called prototype, which can be either null or another object. Other data types are not allowed for this property, which is a reference to the object's prototype. When we try to read a property from an object and it's not there, JavaScript automatically looks for it in the prototype. It's the foundation for many cool features and techniques in programming. The prototype property is hidden, so we can't change it directly. However, there are some methods to work around this. One of them is underscore proto. Here is an example of how it works. Here we assign prototype for rabbit using underscore proto. And now we can find both properties in rabbit because JavaScript follows the prototype property reference. Here we can say that animal is the prototype of rabbit or rabbit prototypically inherits from animal. So if animal has a lot of useful properties and methods, then they become automatically available in Rabbit. Such properties are called inherited. There are two limitations about prototype. First, references cannot go in circles. Second, value of underscore proto can be either an object or null. This one we already mentioned. Underscore proto is a getter and setter for prototype property, which means they're not the same thing. We'll look into why this difference is important sometimes in future lessons. Modern JavaScript recommends using object.getprototypeOf and setprototypeOf instead of underscore proto. We'll go over these methods later on. According to the rules, underscore proto should only be available in web browsers, but in reality, all environments, including server-side, tend to support underscore proto. A prototype is generally used to read properties, not to change them. The one exception is with accessor properties. In the example, we assign its own walk method to rabbit. We can override prototype by reassigning walk method of rabbit. Let's consider the exception that comes with accessor properties. Here this line is the property admin.fullName has a getter in the prototype user, so it is called, and this line call a setter in the prototype, so it is actually not overriding it, more likely calling a method. Original user objects properties will remain the same. This happens because of these behavior in prototypes. This keyword isn't influenced by prototypes. It always refers to the object that is before the dot. So now we understand why the user object in the earlier code example stays unchanged after calling a setter. Remember this, it's important. 
the for in loop iterates over inherited properties too. If that's not what we want and we'd like to exclude inherited properties, there is a built-in method has own property. We can filter properties like this. Almost all other key value getting methods such as object keys, object values and so on ignore inherited properties. Remember this trick, it's very likely that you'll encounter this question in an interview. Here we have the following inheritance chain. Rabbit inherits from animal, which inherits from object.prototype. And then null is above that. Please don't confuse object.prototype with underscore proto and prototype property. They are different things, we'll learn what they are very soon. There is one funny thing. Where is the method rapid.hasOn property coming from? We didn't define it. Looking at the chain, we can see that the method is provided by object.prototype.hasOn property. In other words, it's inherited. But why does has own property not appear in the foreign loop like eats and jumps do if foreign lists inherited properties? The answer is simple, it's not enumerable. Just like all other properties of object.prototype, it has enumerable false. And for in only lists enumerable properties. You might be wondering about enumerable properties and how to work with them. However, that's a separate topic and we won't go into detail about it here. Instead, here is a brief example of how to work with enumerable properties. Function.prototype This introduces another way to set a prototype and it's crucial to understand the differences between underscore proto, prototype property and f.prototype. Objects can be created with new operator. So f.prototype will be set as the prototype property for each new object created with the new f operator. It might sound complicated, but let's look at some examples. Once you get it, you'll always be confident. Please note that function prototype refers to a standard property named prototype found on a function. Indeed, only functions have this property, regular objects don't. If you assign this property to a regular object, it's just another property of that object. When you set rabbit.prototype equals to animal, it means whenever a new rabbit is created, its prototype will be animal. Every function automatically has a prototype property, even if we don't define it. The default prototype is an object with one property named constructor, which refers back to the function itself. We can check it. It's a bit tricky, so please read it over again. Then open your Google Chrome console and experiment with it until you understand. It's really important. Here are a few more tips for those aiming for high proficiency. The function prototype property is used only when new f is called. It assigns the prototype of the new object. If you change the function prototype property after creating an object, for example f prototype equals another object, then any new objects made with new f will get the new object as their prototype. But objects that were already created will keep the old prototype. Usually, to keep the right constructor, we can choose to add or remove properties to the default prototype instead of overriding it as a whole. But prototypes are global, so it's easy to get a conflict. If two libraries add a method string.prototype.show, then one of them will be overriding the method of the other. So generally, modifying a native prototype is considered a bad idea. We can access object.toString even if we haven't specified it in a prototype, because built-in objects like array, date, function and others have methods in their prototypes. We can manually check this behavior. What about primitives? 
One very important thing, that if we try to access their properties, temporary wrapper objects are created using built-in constructors, string, number and boolean. These objects are created invisibly to us, and most engines optimize them out, but the specification describes it exactly this way. Methods of these objects also reside in prototypes, available as string prototype, number prototype and boolean prototype. Warning: Values null and undefined have no object wrappers. Let's consider modern methods to set up a prototype. Object get prototype of returns the prototype of object. Object set prototype of sets the prototype of object to proto. Object create creates an empty object with given proto and prototype and optional property descriptors. The object.create method is a bit more powerful as it has an optional second argument property descriptors. We can provide additional properties to the new object like this. What if we want to store primitives in the underscore proto property? It's really about using objects as clean associative arrays without anything else inside. Object.create null creates an empty object without a prototype. A downside is that side objects lack any built-in object methods, like to string. The next topics are more advanced, so feel free to skip them unless you really want to become proficient in the subject. They are usually not asked in the interviews. But now it's time to tackle some tasks based on the information we have covered so far. We can use object create to perform an object cloning more powerful than copying properties in for in loop. This call makes a truly exact copy of object including all properties, enumerable and non-enumerable, data properties and setters, getters, everything and with the right prototype. <laughs> 